little quartz crystal. We've got a metasulfide of galena that's slightly bluish, so it could have silver in there. Don't leave. No, 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 no. Woo. Mining indicators. See the square? That rectangle? That is a leached out piece of pyrite. Beautiful rainbow turgite with slick lines. Check that out, guys. Isn't that awesome? <laughs> hey, everybody. Welcome back to Ellie Knows Rocks. Today, I am standing on a private mine site. This is BLM property, so it's technically public land, but it is a claimed mine site. So even though you may have permission to walk around here, you can't do any mining. You're not supposed to do that. It's very frowned upon, just to let you guys know. Anyways, a lot of you guys have forget that I am a geologist and I go around doing geologic consulting for all kinds of mining claims, load claims and plaster mining. So this is both a load and a plaster claim. They're that direction. You'll see them a little bit later, but we're gonna go inside of this and check it out. We're gonna meet the mine owner today. Mike's out here with us actually from Desert Dry Washers as well, and he's gonna be walking around with us. So thank you guys so much for joining me on this adventure. Let's go see what we find. This is my second time to Jason's claim. The first time was a quick run through just to see what he had. And today I will be spending eight hours walking over six different claims that he has in the area to tell him what he has, what he doesn't have, and do some mineral identification with him to see if his claims are what he hopes they are and advise him on the best plan of action moving forward. Jason and his wife are very kind and they've already started collecting rock samples for me to look at. That they've already started collecting samples. This is this is fantastic. This makes my job easy. Oh man, is that this? Basically, Jasper is part of a broken arrowhead. Oh my gosh, we've got iron quartz, little quartz crystal. We've got a metasulfide of galena that's slightly bluish, so it could have silver in there. You've got your copper minerals, your chrysocolla, and fire agates. Every claim owner that I've ever spoken to is always interested in the rocks that are around old diggings. And Jason was smart enough to put up a grate over this old shaft. It's chilling on the grate. Don't fall in. It's a really, really long fall. No mine site would be complete without the famous trumpet plant seen on every mine site I've ever been to, and it just means there's heavy metals in the ground. Oh, it effervesces just a little bit and it makes it dull. So you do have a little bit of lead, which also means that you could slightly have platinum. Silver is not going to react with peroxide. Oh, but it is so effervescing like nuts. I bet this would do it too. It doesn't lie. Hey, do you see the little bubbles? Like, Hey everybody, if you're new to my channel and you're loving my content and you like what I do, please don't forget to subscribe, hit that notification button, like, comment, share this video, do all of the things. It is the number one way to support your favorite creator or someone like me. There is a wealth of post-mineralization on this claim in the form of quartz veins. Some of the quartz has webs of manganese and magnesium veins with chrysocolla. Those veins running across are really awesome. It's just a cross-cutting vein, even though that's your main one. This big one right here, the little stringers that are coming off, especially from this, because that cross-cuts this at like a weird angle. So if you followed that and this, you're thinking like right in here that it should meet. When we see things like this, there's nothing around it, right? It means it came from up there somewhere. This is considered colluvium, which means it's a bigger form of a rock that came from an outcrop and then landed here. There's nothing else around it. It's not considered alluvium because it's not weathered or worn down. So that's, that's why you see this, but that means that that source is up there far enough or some jerk brought it up here cracked it open and went ha ha suckers we have exposed rock contacts of igneous and metamorphic rock giving us that exposure due to a thrust fault hi mike <laughs> so this is one of the things they would have totally been following you can see how it stringers out keeps going is this literally oh, and then it truncates we have another contact. It goes that direction. 
And these two come here this way. Look at that. We've got a railroad track. Yeah, that's so cool. So the, the reason this happens, the quartz was pushing up. The outer edges of the quartz in the fluid was so warm, it was leaching out the magnesium from all the way around the monzonite host rock to create what you call a railroad track. So these are really pretty pieces of quartz. This is mainly artisan quartz, but that's awesome. Baron. And not every quartz vein is gonna have something. The main vein that was mined has an open added that was still preserved. It's essentially an open stope with a 45 degree angle. There's also several shallow open shafts and the mic informs us of a cool spot up ahead. If you guys aren't familiar with Mike from Desert Dry Washers, I'll put the link to his website in the description. Again, the post mineralization cross cutting veins on this place is crazy. It's also indicative of a possible pegmatite in the area. And just like that, we run across an old borehole. We are not sure when this was drilled because there's no indication of it in the original mining paperwork that was filed with this claim. But it is drilled a long strike of one of the main ore veins on the property. And if you pay close attention, there's a plethora of color everywhere. From very competent gem silicate, Even. to boulders of hydrothermally altered rocks with chrysocolla and malachite. This is the type of stuff on like where it's like Oh, it's the coating. See this area? Honeybees. Gotta be real careful in Arizona. Half the honeybees are Africanized honeybees and you don't need a killer bee incident. If you've been following my channel long, you'll know that green is one of my favorite colors and green minerals are no exception. And this fibrous malachite is a stunning sample. Spring is coming along quick here in Arizona. And I guess the cactus also like these heavy mineralized rocks. Now, this was a very interesting area because the rock type all of a sudden changes. We step out of our monzonite. We're not quite in a quartz vein. And so we're kind of in this mixture of a rock contact and running right through the pit where they pulled all this out is a gigantic volcanic dike, that darker material running right through it. These are just all great signs for post mineralization. The claim owner wants to show me something that he finds very interesting because there's another rock type down here that doesn't exactly mix with anything that's written down on the paperwork for these mines. As we walk, I point out points of interest and answer any questions he might have, as well as geek out over any rocks that I might see on the ground. And again, the mine owner is very, very smart. He put up another gate over this shaft that's quite deep. Even if you just wanted to be a rock hound on this claim, you would find more than your share of enough copper minerals here with beautiful greens and blues. This next area is one of the most dangerous in old mines. This shaft has a false bottom. It's where old time miners would have put planks in there and then shoved rocks over the top of them in order to conceal what they were digging for. I found this rock quite fascinating. Although the green is very beautiful on it, you have malachite, chrysocolla, a little bit of azurite mixed in and brochantite. You can see where a rock hound would absolutely love being here and unlucky the claim owner didn't have a problem with me taking home a couple samples. You'd think what we're looking at is hard pan, but it's actually a conglomerate with a calcareous silicate mineral matrix. It effervesces strongly with HCL and is one of the first places they're gonna start to mine on the placer. Yep, little water flow areas, little canyon to get stuck in, all the way down and lots of choke points right in here. Look at that, J. Payton, 1890. We assumed that this was one of the original owners and not a grave site as there was no mound or anything indicative of a grave site. This is called dino poop hill. This is not dinosaur poop. These are rounded pieces of quartz inside of a volcanic conglomerate. Look at that. Look how cool those are. You can see kind of how big some of them are. Pretty big. Cool, you are Yes. The XRF is a portable unit. You won't find one of these at home, boys and girls. No, no, these are lab quality. This is an extremely expensive machine. Once the XRF is ready to go, it takes about 20 seconds after you pull the trigger in order for everything to happen and for you to get your results on the screen. And our results came back with magnesium, iron, copper, zinc, arsenic, and chromium, just to name a few. That's cool. 
Just as we're walking up to a pit, something catches my eye. It's a metal sulfide with slick lines on it, which means the minerals probably got brought in along a fold. And this particular metal sulfide was a galena and sphalerite, which is a lead zinc ore. And then almost as predicted as we go up a hill, I start to find pieces of a pegmatite. This is tourmaline on quartz. And all of a sudden, once I found one piece, there were even bigger pieces with sprays of tourmaline throughout. Again, perfect for rock hounding or artisan mining. Then I came across one of the best finds that I've found at a mine in a really long time. This is tergite, also known as rainbow gothite. It's actually a mixture of hematite and gothite. It's relatively rare, and a small thin iron coating that oxidizes over the gothite is what gives it its rainbow. And this one was found right along a fault line. You can see the slicken lines on the side of the rock. It's truly amazing what you can find at a mine. Oops. We go that way. It is so much fun being a geologic consultant. I get to go out to awesome claims and talk with really cool people, walk around, find amazing minerals, and talk about geology. So it keeps me sharp. So I'm so extremely grateful for my college degree in that respect that I get to come out and do this. But one of the things that keeps me sharp is brilliance. Yes, it's actually an app and a computer-based app that I use, and it keeps my brain super, super sharp. And it keeps me thinking about things in very unique ways. And so I've been learning different things about logic, scientific thinking. Brilliant is extremely interactive and there are thousands of lessons from basic computer coding to advanced quantum physics. And they even make math fun. To try everything Brilliant has for free for a full 30 days, visit brilliant.org slash Ellie. And the first 200 subscribers will get 20% off of Brilliant's annual premium subscription. I've included links for you guys to check out if you want to try out Brilliant for yourself. Look at this. Now this is a quartz vein structure. Look at that line. I mean, there's sheets here now. Just the wind ties, some side sticky. Steering up here. Oh. What is that? Oh. Batteries. Look at that. So cool. That direction. Jason is getting the XRD all tuned up and we're gonna go in here and scan some stuff. And while he does that, we're gonna go check out what's inside. I have a couple black lights. I have a flashlight. I came prepared for this. I know this doesn't go back in here too far. Ooh. So we just have to be careful. Ooh. Well, we go in here and it's quiet and silent. It's very clear just from the offshoot here that the miners were trying to follow trends within this quartz vein. And the mineral assemblages with the XRF would indicate silver, copper, lead, gold, and zinc ores. There we go. Now we've got some light. Can I see the rock that we're looking at? Check this out. Let's see if any of this glows. Look at that. That bright white brightness up there. And this is a long wave. And we also have a short wave today sent to us by RaymondWoo.com. I'll leave the link to it in the oh, description. Look at this. Look at that glow. Wow. Let's see what it looks like with a short wave UV light. Ooh, real bright green up in there. Still some bright green stuff. Jason is scanning some rocks. You guys see that up in there? That purple vein? That is amethyst. Isn't that cool? That is killer. That is sweet. 
such great post mineralization. And you can see like the specular hematite edges right there of the quartz, really beautiful quartz crystals. And I'm betting that stuff that we're seeing for us, that's probably calcite that runs all the way up in there, which would make sense. Or it could be micro amounts of fluorite. Oh, that is specular hematite to the max. See that salt line? Then, oh yeah, well, you can just see the silt, like everything falling in the air. Yeah, like, uh, pretty. Glitter. Yes, <laughs> like glitter. Yes, the craft that keeps on giving. Yeah. That is pretty. This is all tourmaline. Oh, down here. I thought you were looking yeah. at this. No. Oh, look at that pattern. Yeah, like. Look cool. Yeah. Whole area is like a giant pegmatite that they drilled into. Mm -hmm. See, I'm gonna, I wanna get my hammer. <laughs> you can see the vein there. Okay, that's cool. <gasps> no, 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 no. Okay, so, yep, I dropped. Here it is. Look at that. small. You can barely, barely see that. Look at this. We've got the amethyst here. Dulls. That has little points on it. Look at those. They're so micro small, but they're so cute. Basically looking at volcanic sediment jasper, though it forms in lenses and dikes throughout different hydrothermal activity. And you can see there's been a lot of hydrothermal alteration. You can just look at all of this, how it's really funky. Oh, those are pretty crystal squirrel moment there. Just massive forms of iron, probably some chromium in this just because of that teal color. But this is really cool. Whoop. I'm gonna snag a piece of that and takes that home. Look at this. This is essentially, this is essentially kind of like an opalite. It is a microcrystalline quartz, regardless of exactly what it is, but the fact that it formed with this hydrothermal fluid is just fascinating. Look how beautiful that is. Fine looking dirt. And so whatever they were processing in here, be it gold or silver, you're going to find micro particles. So this is a great sampling area to do this. Jason and I collected a handful of samples so that he could take them and process them through a dry washer later. Mike had also used his dry washer on the property, and this is what he found. This was only from taking a few bucket samples in my recommended area. He says he'll be going back for a full run in a week or so. Can't wait to see what he finds. After I was finished with nearly a nine hour day, we headed back to camp because I still had a long drive ahead of me. But Jason was thrilled with the finds of the day and I'm pretty sure I'll be back. If you guys have a mine claim in Arizona that you'd like me to check out, just let me know. You guys, I really hope that you enjoyed everything today. These old mines are fantastic to come and work on and you really get to see a big part of history and what they used to see and what they used to do with these mines. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching this video and I'll see you on the next one. Okay, here's Canadian Crusher. Put the rocks in. <laughs> Here we go. This is fabulous. This is